the soul. The Pythagorean harmonic monad what is a monad? It's a photonic atom of atomic mass zero. To be more exact, it's a photonic atom made of standing waves, and contains all possible harmonics from nature's fundamental frequency upwards. Nature's fundamental frequency is one. This means that one complete wave cycle occurs within 360 degrees, a full circle. In nature, you cannot get a frequency less than one. A high frequency corresponds to a high number of completed wave cycles within a full revolution of the flowing point. Each additional wave cycle proportionately increases the energy of the wave. Regarding wavelength, Wikipedia says, in physics, the wavelength of a sinusoidal wave is the spatial period of the wave, the distance over which the wave's shape repeats, and thus the inverse of the spatial frequency. In the pre-space domain, there is no distance to which to refer. Wavelength in this domain corresponds to the number of degrees, or radians, required to complete a full wave cycle. Therefore, one wavelength corresponds to 360 degrees, 2 a grab radians. This is the wavelength that accompanies the natural fundamental frequency of one wave cycle in 360 degrees. As the integer number of wave cycles increases in the 360 degrees, the wavelength is divided by that number, e.g. if there are two wave cycles in the 360 degrees, the wavelength is 180 degrees, and if there are five wave cycles, the wavelength is 72 degrees. 360 degrees is therefore the maximum natural wavelength. Since this is one full revolution, we can refer to it as one. Every harmonic wavelength will be a fraction of one. Just as a chemical, material, atom has electron orbits, so a photonic atom has sinusoidal orbits, and these are simply the harmonics. When a point flows around the Euler unit circle, it produces a full set of sine and cosine waves all at once, each one of which is an eternal stationary wave. It does so because the principle of sufficient reason requires all valid possibilities to be actualized at once. A monad is thus a complete and consistent set of basis Fourier waves for constructing any Fourier series, and thus any periodic wave, no matter how complicated. In every monad, we have every possible frequency required to produce any possible periodic ontological signal. A monad is a photonic Fourier atom. This is none other than what people refer to as the soul. It is an eternal system of indestructible energy. Sustained forever by the perfect motion engendered by the flawless principle of sufficient reason. We have thus brought the soul in from the cold. It is no longer an object of faith or mysticism. It is now the most basic unit of ontological Fourier mathematics. It's a strictly rational mathematical entity, indeed the most basic unit of natural mathematics, from which everything else is constructed. A soul is an autonomous living system for performing Fourier mathematics. When a soul performs Fourier mathematics on its own, it produces its own private subjective dream world. When a soul performs Fourier mathematics in conjunction with all other monadic souls, it produces a public objective physical world. When we sleep, we disengage from the collective world and enter our private Fourier domain, dream world. When we wake, we re-engage with the collective world once more, i.e. the public Fourier domain, material world. An out-of-body experience occurs when our body goes to sleep, but our mind remains linked to the collective world. An out-of-mind experience occurs when our mind goes to sleep and performs private Fourier processing, while our body remains connected to the collective world. This corresponds to being on mental autopilot as we sleepwalk, with no consciousness of what we are doing. When we die, we can enter either a private dream state or a conscious out-of-body state, in which we can exercise conscious control and choice over the reincarnation process, rather than it merely being done to us by automatic Fourier mathematical processes. Every individual monad is a living, thinking, autonomous, harmonic Pythagorean organism playing the divine music of the spheres. What could be grander, nobler and more wondrous? We are the vibrations of eternity. Inside the monad, inside the mind only certain, discrete frequencies are produced within a monad. The fundamental and its harmonic overtones. These are the stable stationary states, and have well-defined analytic solutions. The monad is therefore a discrete quantized system. 
There is a sufficient reason for discrete energies rather than continuous energies, namely that most energies are eliminated because they cannot generate a self-reinforcing wave, hence are unstable and destroy themselves. They are not valid mathematical solutions. A monad is therefore an autonomous unit made up of all possible frequencies, starting from a frequency of 1 and wavelength of 1. No smaller frequency is possible, i.e. we can't have a frequency of 0. Nor is a larger wavelength possible, since wavelength is the reciprocal of frequency. Crucially, frequencies of infinity are impossible because, as frequency rises, wavelength decreases, hence there will come a stage when the wave cycle is attempting to be smaller than the size of the flowing point itself, which is the smallest ontological size possible. Therefore, such wavelengths are unreachable. Neither F nor right double angle bracket can become infinitely large or infinitely small, because then C would no longer have its fixed value. Accordingly, there is a smallest possible ontological wavelength, and thus there is a highest possible ontological frequency. The highest possible ontological wavelength is 1, and the lowest possible ontological frequency is 1. Given that Planck's constant is exceptionally small, the highest frequency is an immensely large number, and this number may be considered the ontologically highest number. This may in fact correspond to the total number of monads in existence, i.e. the total number of monads is not infinite. A monad is a net zero, and it's convenient to refer to it as a zero infinity entity. However, it doesn't quite reach infinity. Finite limitations necessarily kick in. The principle of sufficient reason and monads if c, light speed equals 1 and 1, can be made up of any integer n divided by itself, i.e. c equals 1 equals n slash n, then the principle of sufficient reason mandates that all of these possibilities are equally possible, hence all must be realized, unless a sufficient reason can be advanced as to why they should not, such as a limit on n. So, when a flowing point travels at sea around the circumference of an Euler circle, it simultaneously creates all possible waves consistent with c equals 1 equals n slash n. This means that it also produces all possible frequencies, wavelengths, energies and masses. This is what a monad, a mathematical soul, truly is. A complete and consistent set of ontological waves generated all at once by the principle of sufficient reason producing an autonomous, indestructible, eternal, self-contained unit. There is no mystery about the soul. It is pure math, pure mathematical waves. There is nothing vague and mystical about it. It is the most rationally definable thing you can get. It is the opposite of an undefined, mysterious object of religious faith. If the fundamental energy equals A equals H, then N, the energy of level N equals NH where n is an integer. As n, which furnishes the frequency, increases, 1 slash n, which furnishes the wavelength, correspondingly decreases. As ever, c equals 1 equals n slash n equals f right double angle bracket. If n equals n h, then h equals n slash n. The principle of sufficient reason requires all possible n's and n's to be actualized to satisfy all possibilities for producing the result of h, since none can be privileged over the others. Planck's constant h is none other than the flowing point itself. It is ng distributed over a tiny 1d complex numbered segment, string, we might say. What happens when a 1d real, imaginary or complex wavelength becomes the same order of magnitude as h? Can it become smaller? Or does H set the limit? Does H provide a sufficient reason why wavelength reaches a lower limit, hence frequency thereby reaches an upper limit? If there is a non-zero minimal frequency, then it stands to reason that there is also a non-infinite maximal frequency. If there is a finite maximal wavelength, there should be a finite minimal wavelength too. If there is a finite minimal energy, there must be a non-infinite maximal energy. Just as anything with a beginning must have an end, since there can be no undefined, open-ended processes, so anything with a finite minimum or maximum must also have a corresponding finite maximum or minimum. Linear, open-ended processes are impossible. All processes are closed. Cyclical processes. Science never considers such rational constraints. 
In terms of the speed of light, as frequency goes up, wavelength must go down in order to keep C constant. Likewise, in order to keep H constant, then, as energy increases, wavelength must go down, hence frequency goes up. Planck's constant can be considered to be a flowing point with an internal structure defined by wavelength and frequency, which determine the energy content of the flowing point. Similarly, the speed of light, C, has an internal structure, similarly defined in terms of wavelength and frequency. Where C equals 1 equals F right double angle bracket, then H equals E slash F and H equals E right double angle bracket. Also E equals MC2, thus linking E to M via C. B, M, C, F right double angle bracket, and H are all intimately connected, and all reducible to the basic ontological properties of waves, and in particular to a finite flowing point, moving around the circumference of an Euler unit circle, at the finite speed of light speed, by virtue of the principle of sufficient reason. This is an entirely deterministic analytic system. Indeterminism and probability don't come into it at all, as science idiotically claims, because it refuses to engage with ontology, epistemology and metaphysics. The ontology of Planck's constant Planck's constant, H, is the amount of energy associated with the flowing point. The flowing point traces out the fundamental sinusoidal wave with frequency 1 and wavelength 1, and also all high harmonics. All high harmonics, overtones, are associated with integer multiples of H energy tracks frequency and the inverse of wavelength. In the spacetime world of matter, the flowing point is what is detected as a particle. A flowing point is a concentrated packet of energy, which in the spacetime environment has a non zero mass. The 3D monad we concentrate on Euler circles in one orientation, in order to convey the basic ideas of ontological mathematics, as simply as possible, but things are more complicated than that of course. Science says that the real world comprises three spatial dimensions, and a linked fourth dimension of time. In the Euler universe of mind, three complex planes stand at right angles to each other producing a universe of three real dimensions and three imaginary dimensions, or, equivalently, a total of three orthogonal complex dimensions. These are spatially unextended frequency dimensions and not conventional spacetime dimensions. A full monad exists in this 3D complex domain. Mathematical waves versus scientific waves All mathematical waves are mental waves. They are based on the speed of light, angle, frequency, wavelength and energy. They do not make any reference to space or time. Scientific waves are material waves and at space and time, which are derived from phase, to mathematical, mental, waves. Curtailed waves normal sinusoidal waves travel at light speed and are outside space and time. They exist in the frequency domain and are orthogonal. When they are altered by phase information, they generate space and time waves, which are non-orthogonal, since they are dependent on a phase angle different from 90 degrees. The autonomous agent furthermore, why must it be that everything is acquired by apperceptions of external things, and that nothing can be unearthed from within ourselves? Is a soul in itself so empty that, without images borrowed from outside, it is nothing? Dash Leibniz A harmonic Leibnizian monad is an autonomous agent that can generate entire worlds on its own. The soul is as full as it is ontologically possible to be. It is the ontological definition of eternal fullness. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle The Heisenberg uncertainty principle is a feature that naturally arises in a monadic system. However, it is no longer associated with uncertainty at all, since we are now dealing with the certainty of analytic, well-defined mathematical monads. Everything that science regards as uncertain is in fact deterministically contained within monads. Scientific uncertainty arises because scientific materialism refuses to accept the existence of monadic containers, which provide complete certainty. From the scientific point of view, monads are unobservable hidden variables, which science ideologically rejects. Science says that if something has an exact position, then it has infinite uncertainty associated with it in terms of momentum slash energy. Actually, all that science has done is implicitly define a monad. A monad is an infinite energy system located at a point. Except it's not quite infinite, and thus nor is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle concerned with infinity. 
nothing is ontologically smaller than the flowing point, and nothing is larger than the highest frequency compatible with it. That's nature. It's granular dot because of the flowing point. There is no mystery and no uncertainty. However, to reach this conclusion, you have to invoke a rational mathematical entity beyond the reach of empirical science, which science refuses to do for philosophical reasons. Uncertainty is merely an artifact of science's ideology, not of rational fact. Thoughts what are thoughts? They are the waves that exist within monads, minds. When we want to construct complex thoughts, we simply add waves, thoughts, together, as per Fourier mathematics. That's it. We have explained the mystery of mind using nothing but the principle of sufficient reason and ontological mathematics. Waves light waves to be exact, which are sines and cosines, as per Euler's formula, are the basis of both mind and matter. When a monadic mind operates on its own, it produces its own subjective mental world, as we experience in our dreams. However, when all monads act together, they produce an objective world the world we experience as the persistent material universe of space and time. We can change a dream world night after night because our mind is the only one involved with it. We cannot change the material world day after day because it is the product of every mind in existence, so every mind bar ours obstructs and resists any attempt by us to change it. It is this mental resistance that we perceive as an unchangeable objective world of alien matter. This is, however, a purely mental world. Matter is exclusively a product of mental waves. There is no such thing as matter independent of mind, as science fallaciously claims. Simple, simpler, simplest, it can scarcely be denied that the supreme goal of all theory is to make the irreducible basic elements as simple and as few as possible, without having to surrender the adequate representation of a single datum of experience. Dash Einstein everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. Dash Einstein make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. Dash Einstein Occam's razor says that given competing hypotheses as to the explanation of something, the simplest hypothesis is always the most plausible, and always to be preferred. Well then, what could be simpler that than that the whole of existence results from points moving in circles according to the principle of sufficient reason? Nothing could be simpler than the point, and nothing could be more rational, intelligible and have more rational explicatory power than the PSR. Ontological mathematics is the subject that is produced from the study of nothing but points in rational motion. Therefore, ontological mathematics is the answer to existence. Nothing could be simpler, nothing could be more rational. It has no intelligible rivals, only unintelligible speculations. Einstein, as a typical empiricist, tried to draw experience into the reckoning. Reason has no requirement for experience, and no requirement for Einstein's spurious anti-rationalist thinking. Experience is itself an unnecessary complication. It has nothing to do with the essential building blocks of existence. These have necessarily existed forever, hence are permanently outside any conceivable human experience. No human beings experienced the Big Bang or what preceded it, so how can their experiences observations and experiments have any relevance to it whatsoever. Reason has always existed. Humans have not. Occam's razor demands that we exclude humans and their experiences from any explanation of reality. They are a needless impediment, a superfluous ingredient. Science has never grasped this elementary truth dot because science is about empiricism and is explicitly opposed to rationalism. Occam's razor for an empiricist is entirely different from Occam's razor for a rationalist. Occam's razor for an empiricist is a contradiction in terms since experiences are not, and never can be, explanations. David Hume, for example, abolished causation because it could not be perceived or experienced. Occam's razor most certainly does not abolish causation. Without causation and the PSR, all explanations become absurd, as we see with modern science, especially regarding quantum mechanics and cosmology. There is no requirement for a rational hypothesis to be compatible with observations. It must, however, sustain ironclad reason and logic. Empiricism and rationalism reflect wholly different standards and types of knowledge. Science is on the side of empiricism, while mathematics is on the side of rationalism. 
the universe is either scientific or mathematical. It cannot be both. Mathematics is much simpler than science. Mathematics can stand without science. Science cannot stand without mathematics. When Occam's razor is applied to this fact, there is only one rational conclusion. Mathematics is fundamental, and science isn't, hence ultimate explanations must be entirely mathematical, and must not be contaminated in any way by scientific considerations, especially those involving empiricist thinking. Euler's formula Euler's formula is x equals cos x plus i sin x using the exponential or for integer powers, we can write x right parenthesis n equals x which leads to x equals cos nx plus i sin nx, we can introduce the speed of light, c, into Euler's formula by writing x equals cos cx plus i sin cx. However, if c equals 1 then this simply reduces to the basic Euler formula. If c equals 1 equals f right double angle bracket, then right double angle bracket equals 1 slash f, and f equals 1 slash right double angle bracket. We can write eif right double angle bracket x equals cos f right double angle bracket x plus i sin f right double angle bracket x frequency, always has integer values in our harmonic system. As it rises, wavelength falls correspondingly. Ensuring that f right double angle bracket always stays equal to 1. This means that although all waves operate at the same speed the fixed speed of light the speed can be achieved in myriad different ways, by adjusting the frequency and the corresponding wavelength. The DSR guarantees that all of these different possibilities are realized at once, since there is no reason to privilege any of them over any of the others, so all are accommodated equally. If E equals HF and C equals 1 equals F right double angle bracket then E equals H slash right double angle bracket and H equals E right double angle bracket. Just as C is a fixed quantity but can be achieved in many different ways by adjusting the frequency and wavelength appropriately, so H is a fixed quantity that can be achieved in many different ways. As wavelength decreases, frequency increases and energy increases. The quantization that characterizes quantum mechanics is thus supplied in two different ways. 1. Energy can come only in H-sized bundles, and not in any old bundle, and 2. Energy derives from standing waves that have integer frequencies and reciprocal integer wavelengths. Non-integer frequencies are not possible. These two considerations mean that energy will always appear in parcels, in chunks, in packets, in quanta, and only certain energy levels are attainable. It's not that energy is not a continuum, but rather that most energy points on the continuum are unstable, hence only certain discrete points on the continuum prove stable and selectable. As ever, we find the finite appearing in the midst of the infinite. That's the beauty of math. The two realities there are only two realities the individual mental reality produced by single minds acting separately, and the collective mental reality produced by all minds acting together. Although both are mind constructed realities, they have an entirely different character, and we experience them entirely differently. Our individual dream world can be changed at will. The same is not true of the objective world. We are up against every other will in the universe. Every will is resisting us. Therefore the objective world seems alien, other, full of resistance to a will. Standing waves ontological standing waves don't go anywhere. They don't travel through space-time. Standing waves form in a bounded medium. The singularity is exactly such a bounded environment. It's the ultimate such boundary dot a single point.